A Christian is one who believes all this truly. And the Bible says to comfort one another with these words. So while we do the things that we do on earth, we have somewhere at the back of our minds that someday this life will be folded like a curtain and we walk conscious of that reality. Have you been blessed? Now I can say for everybody who means business with Jesus, happy is sir. Hallelujah. You believe that? Amen. My teaching for tonight. Everything that you have been receiving, this is um, an appetizer. Koinonia for you. Are you ready? Two scriptures for tonight. Colossians chapter 1 from verse 12 to 14. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe, Lord, breathe. Breathe upon my life. Lend me your attention now. Colossians chapter 1, 12 to 14. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Uh-huh who had delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. John chapter 10 and verse 10. Powerful scripture. Amplify it please. The thief cometh not, or the thief comes only in order to steal and kill and to destroy what's his threefold ministry to steal and kill not steal or kill or destroy he will do all three building one upon another to steal in addition to stealing kill in addition to killing destruction but jesus said i am come or i came that they including everyone here may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance the meaning to the full till it overflows shout amen. amen now according to scripture there are two kinds of life that every man on earth has an opportunity of experiencing please listen carefully there are two kinds of life essentially everyone born by a woman every human who finds himself in this side of god's kingdom according to scripture is given an opportunity within the span of his lifetime are we together to experience one or preferably two of these kinds of life number one is called the biological or physical life your biological or physical life let's walk very quickly so the first kind of life that every man born at all has an opportunity to experience. What is the biological life? The life that an individual can have at the point of conception or delivery. You are given an opportunity from the time of conception up until you are delivered and then you grow and live your life. You have the biological or physical life. The possibility of that life based on spirituality and biology, we are taught that it stands at the point of conception. You are given an opportunity to experience that life for no matter how short a time, every man who passes through the earth, are we together now, has an opportunity to experience that life, the biological, physical life. Number two, the second kind of life is called Zoe. God's supernatural abundant life. Zoe. God's supernatural abundant life. God's supernatural abundant life. This life is spiritual in context. This life is spiritual in context. However, it is lived out in the physical realm. It is spiritual in context. 
Are we together? It is not biological, meaning it does not depend on your being born by a woman. No. Being born by a woman affords you the opportunity to have the biological or physical life. Are we together? But the moment you have that, you are qualified that if you walk in keeping with the terms that administer the second dimension of life, you can have Zoe, God's spiritual, supernatural, abundant life. It is spiritual in context, but it is lived out in the physical realm. Now listen, I wrote something here that I want you to please listen to. God's life, what we call Zoe, this second but higher dimension of life, it came as an improvement and a remedy to the limitations that come with the biological life. The life Zoe, this abundant life, we call it eternal life or everlasting life. You see that now? It came as an improvement and then a remedy to the limitations that came with the physical life. In 1 Corinthians, I believe, uh, 1545 I think 15 give us 44 or 45 I think it's 45 yes and so it is written the first man Adam was made a living soul are we together and the last Adam not just the second Adam the last Adam was made a quickening or a life-giving spirit that means even if Adam did not fall listen to me the life that we now have in Christ is still more superior than the original life or to the original life that Adam had. Are we together? The life that we are given in Christ is not the same life Adam had before the fall. Adam was a living soul that degenerated to become an embodiment of sin through the fall. But that the life that we have in Christ today, Zoe, makes us beyond living souls. We are now life-giving spirits. It's a superior kind of life. Are we together? So I said that this life, Zoe, came as number one, an improvement. And then a, a remedy. It came to remedy the degeneration that happened through the fall. Reducing man to become an embodiment of sin. And then it came as an improvement to the life that man had. The way it is called. Now, um, let, let, let me use the example of our apps. How many of you have seen whether your, as you use your phone, your gadgets, there are times that the phone will tell you there is an update. Is that true? It will tell you that there is an update. Do you know that as far as the company responsible for the applications, they have sent the update and it has reached your phone. And many times they can even list for you the new features in the updates that both improve the quality of your device and remedy for certain flaws in the older version. Am I right on that? Praise the name of the Lord. So it will tell you that there is an update, but in most cases it will give you an option whether to update immediately or at a later time. And you can keep postponing forever. The manufacturers, as far as they are concerned, you should already be enjoying the richer, better experience of that application. But because you have not taken advantage of the update, the potential is already flashing on your phone. But whether you walk in the experience of it or not, you can still be suffering the limitations of the older version. Whereas the possibility for an update is there. Are we together? God's life came as an improvement and a remedy to the limitations that come with the physical or biological life. Now please pay attention everyone. I wrote something else here that I want you to listen to. The presence of sin, the presence of the wickedness of men, and the presence of demonic activities, three factors. You want to benefit from this miracle service, listen to this point. The presence of sin as a nature producing the outworkings of unrighteousness, the presence of the wickedness of the hearts of men, and the presence of demonic activities makes it impossible 
to live an excelling life from a purely biological standpoint. That means there are three factors that makes it impossible to maximize life if the only thing you have is the biological life. The presence of sin as a nature in man. In iniquity did my mother conceive me, the psalmist said. Are we together? So in every man programmed in our DNA by reason of the fallen nature is the nature of sin that will now produce the outworkings of unrighteousness in its variety. That it's a nature that is in a, enshrined in all men. The only remedy to that nature is receiving the life of God. Are we together? The presence of sin. Then the presence of the wickedness of men. Then the presence of demonic or satanic activities makes it impossible to live an excelling life and to maximize life from a purely biological standpoint. In Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5, God looked down and he saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Who saw it? God. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. This was God's verdict. When he looked from heaven, he saw that something had happened to man by reason of the falling nature. That the imaginations in the heart of man was only wicked continually. And that because of that very factor, it is impossible for you unassisted to truly walk in the experience of victory if all you have is just the biological life. Men will not even allow you to enjoy your life. That's what I'm trying to say. That men are wicked, so wicked, you don't have to look for anybody's trouble. They fabricate imaginations and make sure they stop you from enjoying the liberty that is in Christ. Are we together? So because you get married, someone gets angry and says, On over my dead body for you to enjoy your marriage. Men for you. You say, ah, I just got a job with an oil company. An oil company before me. All right. You see that now. It is the reality. God's verdict about men is that the imaginations in the hearts of men, the wickedness of man was so great. That's why he sent the flood to purge the earth. The presence of sin. The presence of wickedness in the hearts of men. And the presence of demonic activities makes it impossible. First John 5, 19. The Bible says, now we are of God and the whole world lieth in wickedness. The whole world, ladies and gentlemen, not just Abuja, not just Nigeria, not just Africa, not just America, Europe, wherever. Once you are on earth, it says the whole world lieth in wickedness. Hallelujah. In John chapter 5. Very interesting discourse. Jesus healed the man at Bethesda, if you recall. And when he healed the man, the man got up and went away. And the scribes and the Pharisees were angry. And they began to challenge Jesus' healing ministry. Saying that don't come and heal a man on a Sabbath day. There are other days in the week. Let that man be healed that day. And when Jesus saw the man, give us from verse 12, I think, 12 to 14 for sake of time. But the full text is John chapter 5 from verse 1 to 14. And they asked, then they, then asked they to him, what man is that which said unto thee, take up thy bed and walk? And he that was healed, which not who it was, for Jesus had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. Verse 14. Afterwards, this was, this, this is my emphasis. Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, watch this, behold, thou art made whole. He says, sin no more, lest a worse thing comes upon you. So we know what brought the problem in the first place. You see that now. He's telling him that the cause for this thing, whether it is sin caused by you or inherited by bloodline, this has been responsible for this bodily tragedy you are suffering. And he says, as you go, he said, sin no more. Less a worse thing will come upon you. So the nature of sin, the presence of sin, the presence of the wickedness in the heart of men, and the presence of demonic forces. Demonic forces. The Bible is full of expressions 
that there are demonic forces that spy upon the liberty of the saints day and night. Satan is ever determined, listen, to destroy your destiny and my destiny. And if allowed, he will wreck your life, wreck your ministry, wreck your family, wreck your reputation, wreck, destroy everything. The thief he is called, that when he comes, there is no sparing. He is vicious, merciless in his operation. He will steal, he will kill, and he will destroy. Now, from a purely physical and biological standpoint, it is impossible to live a life, I wrote here, that captures total health, longevity, listen now, impact, favor, advancement. You cannot experience all of this from a purely biological standpoint. No, something will be wanting in your life. You cannot enjoy total health if all you have is just biological life. No matter how you eat well, no matter how you do your gym, profitable as they are, demons don't care whether you are gymming every day or you are eating cabbages and veggies. When they come, they are vicious. They will plant wicked diseases that you cannot trace to any mismanagement in terms of nutrition. Satan for you. Hallelujah. How about longevity? Do you know? The Bible says, With long life shall I satisfy you and show you my salvation. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't want to live long if you don't live well. Because it becomes like a curse. There are many people today, long life is a curse to them. I tell you the truth. They pray for death and pray for death and the spirit of death will never come to them. Do you know why? Because the devil enjoys their being tortured. They are kept in a state where they cannot help themselves, but they become liabilities to any other person, yet they will not die. Do you know the Bible says when the church is raptured, it said that because of the persecution of the Antichrist, this death that people are running away from, that people will come to the mountain and say, fall on us, so that we'll die and escape this, and death itself will run away from them. It is not wise to just live long if you are not going to live victorious. With long life will I satisfy you, but within that long life I will show you my salvation. Hallelujah. Now, please don't, don't feel sad, and, 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 and this is not to play with your emotions. I've had the honor of praying for people, and I've had the time, I've, I've seen situations where families themselves, out of love, they pray for their loved ones to just die. Not because they hate them. There are people who live perpetually in pain. And after 10 years, they are still there. They can't move. They can't use the toilet. They can't stand. They can't do anything. People have to resign their jobs to stay with them. And these are family members. I pray for you in Jesus' name. If you must live long, live well. Receive it as a prophetic word. If you must live long, live well. You will not live long and sick. Shout a believing amen. You will not live long and the only part of your body moving is your eyes. Every other part of you is dead. Yet for 10 years you will still be alive. That is torture like hell. I tell you. You ask medical practitioners, sometimes even though they have the versatility of experience, they've had to stand before patients to cry and weep like children. Hallelujah. You see people damaged and degenerated as if they are not God's creation and yet they will not die. I'm saying it to you again. If you must live long, receive the grace to live well. So from a purely biological standpoint, it is impossible to capture within that life, unassisted by the presence of eternal life, many possibilities like supernatural health, longevity, with dignity, a life of impact from a kingdom standpoint, a life of favor, a life of advancement. There are defects and limitations that come with living purely biologically. That is what we call existence, not living. And there are many people who are just existing and not living. Celebrating birthdays every year, wonderful as it is, 
but with nothing credited to their life that demonstrates dignity. If all you have in this place whilst you are listening to me and across the airwaves is just biological life, the life that came from your mother giving birth to you, I congratulate you for being alive, but there is an effective superior life that Jesus came to give us. Are we together? It's called Zoe, his life. It's not the life given to Christians. It's the life given to all men who believe in Jesus. Let me repeat myself again. It's not a life given to Christians. The Bible says, Whosoever believeth on him. John 3, 16. Whosoever, an unbeliever who believes in him. A supposed outcast who believed in him. Someone who has had your life destroyed and degenerated by wrong decisions. That at the point you believe in him. There is a law in the spirit that you should not perish, but have everlasting, abundant, superior life in all its ramifications. But I am come that ye may have life and to have that life more abundantly. Now, this is the zenith of my charge this night. Listen carefully. Enjoying and maximizing the Zoe life demands that you walk in keeping with four factors. Enjoying, please write, enjoying and maximizing the Zoe life, this eternal life, this all superior life that has come from Jesus to us as a gift. Enjoying and maximizing the Zoe life demands that you walk in keeping with four factors. If you do not understand this part, then tonight's miracle service will hardly profit you. Are you ready? Number one, the first factor that you must walk in keeping with if you are to enjoy and maximize this eternal life is that you must, number one, have an encounter with Jesus, the Son of the living God. Jesus, the Son of the living God. The first factor that you must walk in keeping with if you want to receive, enjoy, and even maximize this new life called eternal life, a non-negotiable condition and in order of priority, you must encounter Jesus, the Son of the living God. Very quickly, 1 John 5, 11 and 12. 1 John 5, 11 and 12. This is the record or the testimony that God had given to us eternal life. The Bible says, and this life is in his son. Verse 12. He that hath the son hath life. And he that hath not the son hath not life. It's as simple, as clear as that. In John chapter 3 from verse 15 to 17. Jesus is speaking with Nicodemus. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, 15 says, but to have eternal life. Now verse 16, popular scripture, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 17, it says God did not send his son. I wish many people would hear this. That God did not send his son to the world to condemn the world but that the world through that son might be saved are we together the first demand that you must walk in keeping with is an encounter with Jesus the son of the living God number two the second demand the second factor that you must keep to enjoy and maximize eternal life are you ready is knowledge 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 the administration of eternal life like you have learned again and again in this house is knowledge dependent say knowledge now back to my example of your applications and the updates so here you are having various updates sometimes it will list as much as 10 15 updates are we together now and it gives you the liberty 
to if you know how to use them well you can update every one of them but in ignorance you will not even know you are supposed to update the applications so even though it has been given it takes knowledge Ephesians 4 18 having their understanding darkened being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts you can be genuinely saved genuinely saved the same way the app was really at your phone your phone has that application but never enjoy the riches that come with that life you need knowledge the knowledge of the promises and the benefits that come with this life you have received and scattered all through scripture you find it in Psalm 103 you find it in you know all through the Gospels and even the epistles various expressions of these promises and these benefits that come with the Zoe life I've taught you many times the Bible says bless the Lord O my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name verse 2 says bless the Lord O my soul and forget not his benefits this scripture has a capture of some of them number one who forgiveth all thine iniquities number two who healeth all thy diseases number three who redeemeth thy life from destruction deliverance number four who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies number six who satisfied thy mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle this is a, a capture of some the many other benefits but you must know what has come to you on account of this eternal life.